This is you and yours, Radio 4's Consumer Programme. It's 17 minutes past 12. Disabled people who need a helper or a carer to go with them to the theatre are in for some good news. At the moment, some venues around the UK charge for the carer, and that means the disabled person can end up paying double what an able-bodied person would pay or a disabled person who can go on their own. But now, a legal case could force all theatres to change their policies. Chris Fry is a partner at Utility Law, and he was involved in this case. Um, The case involved a group of disabled people who were buying tickets for show at the York Barbican Theatre. So tell me, Chris, what happened? That's right. Um, A a group of residents at the Leonard Cheshire Care Home in uh, Wharfdale House in Yorkshire decided to go to watch Bill Bailey uh, at the York Barbican. They were surprised and um, overwhelmingly disappointed to find out that um, that that would have involved a, a cost of double uh, simply because they would have needed to take their carers with them. Now, some people listening will say, well, what's wrong with that? You know, that carers are seeing the show. Why shouldn't they have to pay for it as well? Well, what's important is that the uh, obligations placed on a service provider, such as uh, the, the operator of the Barbican, to uh, make sure that the, um, that, that the service they're providing is accessible uh, and, doesn't, uh, and the outcome of any policy criteria or practice doesn't create a da- substantial disadvantage to the, the disabled service users themselves. Uh, and in this case, the, that policy did create a substantial disadvantage. In addition to the, the extra cost of the ticket, don't forget that these disabled people are taking are paying for carers themselves. Uh, they're often uh, spending substantially more money in, in trying to get to the venues through um, various additional costs of transport. So the, the, the outcome of that policy... Uh, was such that, in short, uh, it would have cost double to go. The only reason for that was because um, our lead client, Doug, was in a wheelchair, and that's clearly a a breach of the Equality Act. Yes, you took legal action um, under the Equality Act. Um, Tell me what happened then. Well, initially, Doug tried to resolve this on behalf of the other residents himself and um, uh, and got got nowhere. Um, He he came to us um, and... We had to issue county court proceedings. Um, it, it took right up to the the, the evening before trial uh, before we could um, uh, persuade SMG, who operate the Barbican, that in fact that policy was discriminatory. Um, over the course of that, we had to overcome various hurdles. Obviously, we have to prove that the claimants are disabled, uh, to prove that they need carers, uh, and then to establish that in fact there are reasonable adjustments that could be made, which could could resolve the situation in a positive way. Um, so we got all the way up to trial. Um, the trial uh, itself didn't need to take place. Um, uh, an agreement was reached, endorsed by the, um, uh, the, the judge in the county court, uh, which accepted that uh, the, the policy had discriminated against disabled service users. Now, usually it doesn't count as a precedent unless um, there has been a judgment, but you believe that in this case it is a precedent? Yes, we have. Uh, I have here a, um, a judgment from the county court, which uh, accepts that the claimant was subjected to discrimination. It, it further goes on to, to tell us what the, um, uh, the service providers should do to try and um, uh, overturn that. So uh, make sure that the tickets no, that, that no disabled service users should pay more than one full price ticket, even if they they brought a carer with them. That that's the blueprint. For further action. Chris Fry, thank you for that. Well, our disability reporter, Karen Atkinson, has also been looking at the wider picture. Um, so tell me, Karen, what then has York Barbican Theatre done about this ruling? Well, they have changed their policy um, and they also run some other venues. And what they're saying is that in, in the previous policy, they gave a discounted ticket. Now they say a disabled person and a carer together will pay no more than one full price ticket. And they are conducting a full review across all their venues. That's one theatre and entertainment group. What about all the rest? Well, there does seem to be an awful lot of variation. Some, as we hear, discount tickets. Other offers the the three carer position if it's required. Some are bringing in access lists. But I've discovered that talks have now started between theatre and live music operators to try to create a UK-wide card for disabled people who need carers or personal assistance. And that would hopefully solve the issue of 
of ticket pricing, of carers' tickets, etc. But it was also improve the facilities that are available for disabled people. Um, already, some music promoters like Live Nation already offer excellent services at festivals. They give fridges for storing medication or PowerPoints to charge electric wheelchairs, for example. And in fact, they had already started looking at bringing in an access card. Other services, though, aren't quite as good. So this idea for a national card follows on from a p- report that was published a few months ago by an organisation called Attitude is Everything. We reported about it on you and yours the society of ticket agents and retailers who represent the major ticket companies and some of the big arenas have now got together with the theatre industry to try to make things smoother for disabled people and improve the service in fact cinemas already have a card like this run by the cinema exhibitors association now i've been speaking to lucinda harvey from the society of london theatres and the organization called uk theatre which represents regional theatres both organizations are involved in these talks for a, for a national card but until that happens lucinda says their best practice for carer tickets is very clear we would advise theatres in our membership to be able to offer a two-for-one seat, i.e. if somebody needs to have a carer with them in order to be able to meet their needs during the performance, they should be able to go free. So effectively, they do not pay. The disabled person pays, but the carer does not. You give that as your best practice advice. Are you aware that most of your members are doing that, or do you hear cases where it doesn't happen? I would hope that most of our members would be adopting that practice. If it is found out that they are not, that is something that uh, we would be interested in having a conversation with our member theatres about, if only to discover that it is because they have done it for a valid reason, and if it is not a valid reason, then that is certainly something that we would want to be able to discuss on the basis of trying to improve the service to disabled people, which is absolutely our aim here. What training do you give to box office staff, for example, who are frontline and often going to be the people who are going to be selling the tickets and meeting the people at the box office who have particular needs? You will appreciate that one of the difficulties that a box office person has is that they cannot directly ask you if you are disabled or not. The line that we indicate to them might be helpful and courteous is to be able to lead with a question such as, uh, do you have any specific access requirements? that you would like me to know about and that you as a disabled customer would be able to offer up uh, the information that they need in order to be able to make the visit what you want it to be. But there are examples of people being sort of asked to prove their disability at the box office or, you know, deaf people being asked, can you show us your blue badge, for example? I think it's unfortunate if you're being asked for proof for something that you can't necessarily prove. The advice that we give is that if somebody has a disabled person's rail card and they happen to have it, then so be it. If somebody is not able to give proof, you have to take that on trust. That does lead, though, to the question of fraudulent purchasing of tickets by people who claim to be disabled when in fact they're not. How do you deal with that? I think everybody can appreciate that that is potentially a concern. I think our line would be that you need to be satisfied in yourself that somebody is not doing that. It is very difficult for somebody to be able to challenge it. I do not think that you should challenge it. I think that there is a counter-argument to the fact that there are people in the audience who could potentially be classified as disabled under the Equalities Act, but who choose not to. Somebody with HIV, for instance, who wouldn't necessarily ask for a disabled discount, but could potentially do so, but who chooses not to do so. At the moment, preliminary talks are going on between yourselves in the theatre industry, the live music industry, and you're discussing whether a national card could be brought in for disabled people. What stage are things at at the moment? Extremely preliminary. It's a subject that has come up over the years. It is something that we are basically discussing it's only at a first meeting stage it is something where we have all said that we would like to be able to continue to talk we do think it is an idea worth exploring I think it would allow box office staff some security in being able to ask quite legitimately for proof without having to worry about how they ask and in what way and I think it would also cut down on the disabled customer worrying about whether they're going to be asked and how they're going to prove it and in what way. I I can't repeat enough 
that what we want is for people to come in to the theatre and we want people to be able to enjoy it uh, regardless of whether they have a disability or not. So if this allows more people to come in, brilliant. Karen Atkinson talking to Lucinda Harvey and we'll follow that up to see if a card system can be set up. Before that, I was talking to Chris Fry. He's from Unity Law.